All right, traders, good afternoon. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and today is Tuesday, March 28th. Uh, risk disclaimer in front of you, everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, uh, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Uh, please read the full risk disclaimer right there. Let me just start. The, where, oh, there we go. There's the, there's the video. All right. So uh, theme of the day. Um, of course, I think, you know, if you're active in this market or trying to be active in the in this market, um, you know that uh, it's been a very choppy, choppy market. And, um, you know, I think I said in, in yesterday's video, sideways probably about um what seven or eight times or something like that in the video so that continues and you know ultimately you know i'll kind of just give a little you know uh, go right to the uh conclusion of this video <laughs> but i will go through some charts is that you know you just kind of have to be patient here um i i really i don't know if what is going on is because of quarter end and a lot of you know positioning or rotation um i think there's also just a lot of indecision in, in this marketplace right now too and and um you know bulls and bears are kind of um are battling it out to, to some extent so um again if we let's go to the um Let's go to the S&P chart and I'll spend just about 10, 15 seconds here on the daily chart because there's not much of a takeaway that you can really pull from here other than what I just said. Um, this is like really staying around this 200 period moving average, which is this big white line that's in here. So, um, you know, if you're bullish or, you know, if you're perma bullish or if you're perma bearish, um, you know, in the short term, you're probably getting pretty uh, banged up here to some extent because it's, it, you know, it's a sideways market. And um, I always kind of chuckle a little bit when I see people on uh, Twitter that are that are um, really pushing a bullish or narrative, a bullish, sorry, bullish or bearish bearish narrative because um you know the the more flexible that you could be is really the best i i think you know the the best strategy right now in this market and also because while the market's doing this like back and forth action um what is hurting people and i know because i've been through this to some extent you know on a day or two here or there is that if if you're chasing green right that's not working in this market if you're um, chasing red to the downside and, and shorting um, red days that's not working either you know you really have to be strategic um what i've been trying to do is um i try to mention this in the in the trading room and try back trade group trading room as much as possible but scaling in just works right not having that one um you know sometimes people like to kind of pick a spot and and they say okay i'm, I'm establishing my trade and then they're not managing it um I, I leave myself you know plenty of opportunities to add back to a position um i i even try to take slim targets targets. Um, I've been, I've been doing that now for a while. Um, I, I, sometimes that's frustrating for traders to follow, but you know, it's some, with this market, if you don't take a $2 target, like if you're, if you're in like a $50 stock and you're not taking a, a $2 target right now, which is 4%, right. You're, you're, you're letting this, and then you, this market backs up on you and it's back to your cost basis, right. I look at it as if you take a, if you take a target $2 away, you know, you can put that target back when, as soon as when the market pulls back because that's what it's doing right and then you can go through that that exercise again it goes up another dollar two dollars you take another target right and um that's what's working in this market if you're holding out for big targets and things it you know you can get them but those opportunities are pretty far uh few and far between all right so um i, I spent more time on that but on the um on the daily chart, but I'm just kind of going over what this market is right now. Again, it will change, um, but you have to be patient, right? And not get frustrated and not get chopped up in this market and, and you know, try to keep your sanity, um, go for a walk, I, you know, while this thing is kind of chopping around a bit, but let's go over some, let's go over signals and what we try to avoid, right? So uh, as usual, um, you know, I talk a lot, a lot about volume at price. This is the TTG market webs, you know, that you're looking at in terms of this value area. Um, when things are not breaking out and not, you know, don't have momentum to the upside, when we kind of move back in to the range and we are in the value area for the week um, which indicates again what's the word sideways right um where what i generally 
tried to do is exploit trends. Now we just don't, we haven't really had that. So I can't get real aggressive until, you know, things kind of change, right? And, um, you know, until then it's more of a scalper's market. Q's, I even tweeted this out. I said, hey, Q's could be a short here. And, um, you know, I, I think people like like that because sometimes I jinx, I, I jinx, you know, that type of, um, you know, type of strategy because um, we did break the value area um, for the day, but we managed to climb back. And um, we were kind of hanging around here. You could see this back test. You know, we got into back into the value area, popped right back out, but really didn't spend. You know, spent there was a. I don't know if that was a sell program that hit around like one o'clock today, um, but uh, buyers kind of picked up the pace on that. All right, so that's so this could set up for a nice trade for tomorrow, right? Now that you've got a dip and kind of um, washed out some of that bullish momentum, you know, everybody kind of I thought came into this week, right? I saw a lot of people posting growth trades, and I'm like, it was kind of a little bit of a head scratcher for me. I have those on my watch list too because you know I I want to monitor for continuation in some of those stronger areas, but with value underperforming for like four weeks in a row, right? You know, sometimes you. Do have to kind of look at some of those um, other areas besides, you know, after three or four weeks of outperformance um, in the queues, right? That's that's something to be cognizant of. That that, that that's that things don't go up in a straight line. Here's what the queues IWM chart looks like, right? I mean, we have this massive uh, queues versus IWM. So queues are in the numerator, uh, IWM is in the denominator, and you know, after this massive move up. Right. Um, of course, there's going to be um, some outperformance coming from some other or some other areas because that's just not natural. Right. And again, that gives perspective when you note something like that out that outperformance. It's tough to kind of think that that's going to continue. So bottom line is right. The queues are back in you know after moving down from 312, you know, down about five bucks. Um, you know, now they they might set up a little bit better here. And I'll go over a couple of names that I'm watching. Um, and then finally, IWM, right? I talked about, um, you know, a lot of people were talking about a bullish divergence when they looked at the uh, bullish RSI divergence, right, over the weekend, right? I think this was pointed out not just by me, but several other traders I saw posting this too, right? That the when IWM made a new low, the RSI did not. So um, it's hanging in here. But, you know, if you caught this yesterday for an up 1% move in small caps, congratulations to you. If you didn't, really what you want to be watching is this 175 level. Again, all this stuff is, you know, is is um, something that you can... Um, that you can scalp, but it's really not a big trade, you know, when you're looking at inside value, right? What I, what again, um, I tend to look for is when we, when we start to make a break out of the consolidation, out of the sideways price action, right? Um, and then I'll also just bring up two other things too. Crude, just, uh, you know, amazing. You know, I was surprised at the move in crude yesterday up 5%. Well, it tacked on another 1%. So again, it's, this is the easier part. You know, this is the bounce where the tough part is going to be once we get to that 75 level, right? Then you might see a rejection there, or if it's really strong, you know, maybe crude can get back into this uh, sideways range where we were for a couple months. And then gold, Right. Um, gold was pretty important when we took out this virgin point of control. We are um, putting in maybe a bull flag in here. Um, it did not take out yesterday's candle. But if we go to the one hour chart, um, you've got a level to really pay attention to closely. You know, why do I give these levels so close by? Right. In my in, in trading, I, I like to concentrate. I like to have try to find as many easy setups as possible. What's an easy setup? Right. Well, something like this. Right. We just moved inside the value area for the week. Right. You know where this trade is not going to work. Right. If it breaks back outside of 1968, you take your trade off. Right. But now this is uh, flashing the 80 percent rule. And there's an 80 percent chance that this can go from the bottom of value to the top of value, which is basically 2000. All right. That's as easy as it gets. Again, it doesn't mean that, um, it, you know, you still have to click the mouse. 
I encounter this with people all the time um, with traders. I tell them, hey, okay, this trading at 1975 right now, you know, your stop price should be right below this value area, which, you know, the bottom of value is 1968. I tell that to traders and half the time they don't follow it, right? <laughs> Once it goes back be, be, uh, below 1968. And really it becomes repetition um, that, that for more experienced traders, they know that they're going to have losers, right? It's just part of the game, right? And of course, um, you know, the, the game is to maximize your winners. Again, tough in this market to really get, a, to get um, you know, a lot of big winners, but you still want to have larger winners than losers, right? And this is something like a move up to 2000, you could see that's good risk return to where you would get stopped out in the trade, which would just be um, right below 1968. So again, um, of course, you know, with the, with our, with my trading plan and system, you, you still have to click the mouse where you should, right? And um, that would be just below value. All right, so so that's the story um, with just macro stuff. You know, I'll go over some trades for today. Right, the semis were weak. This is something. You know, I was away this weekend, but I did give a brief audio file, and I, I told. Um, Tribeca Trade Group members, I said, be careful of the semis here because um, they're one of their rising and really narrow breath. Um, they've acted really well, but you know this market gets overcrowded. Like if a trade works really well in this market, it gets overcrowded really, um, you know, really soon. So um, we did have a little bit of a shakeout in the semis, right? You know, here's a good example for me. You know, this AEHR which I actually added to it yesterday, right? I tried to do some some dip adding, right, yesterday. Um, and it just dipped a little bit too far. Now, again, this thing's going to have earnings. So I probably won't get back into it other than for a day trade um, because it's going to have that earnings report on Thursday. But, you know, here, here was my trailing stop. You know, again, bringing up your trailing stops also is important, right? This is a name that I got into, I think, around $33, right? Now, I'm sure not going to give back those profits on my original entry price of 33 So once this thing broke value, um, I'm out of it, right? And um, this is where I originally paid for it, 3360 But of course, you know, I took profits, I think, almost, I think around up to $39, $40, I, I think, in this trade. So this one worked out really well. But again, um, you know, you have to really, sorry, um, I was going a little bit too close to the screen. But, you know, you really have to actively manage your trades, right, by putting, you know, after you get into a trade, right, making sure that you, you know, put your downside alert, right? If the name starts working for you, right, you've got to trail with a, you've got to bring that stop higher, Right. Um, and again, that can really, um, you know, make it be the difference in this market, whether you're a profitable trader or you're not a profitable trader. Let's stick with the semis just for a minute. I'll go over a couple other things, too. Right. This was a this um, NVIDIA I had been in. All right. I mean, you could do these nice little things in our trading room. Right. Where you can actually bring up. Um, NVIDIA and all my trades in this one, right? So I originally got into this on the 16th, right? At um, at 245, right? Started taking profits at 248. Um, took my last target, I think at 261, right? And um, I added uh, I added to this at 253 on the dip, took some off. So you could see how I'm, you know, I'm, I'm constantly, you know, managing this so that I'm um, selling into strength. I'm buying a little bit more back on a dip. Um, and then today I got involved in this again. So again, here's my exit. This was uh, just a couple of days ago at 266, right? And then um, I added at 261 today, right? Notice the stop, right? 258, which is right in here. Um, and so far, it's holding in. Now, again, I may get stopped on that, stopped out on this um, tomorrow. But again, you know, notice again, I'm just taking a little bit of profits off, um, and we'll see if this thing can kind of get going. How does this look on the daily chart? Well, the only thing here, you know, and again, you have to be reasonable, right? Could this slip all the way back to the 20-day moving average? It could, right? And that's why I take that quick target, right? Because I think that that's possible too. But it's also possible that this was enough consolidation, right? My ultimate target. And NVIDIA is 300. Um, so again, I'm going to continue to add on the dips. Um, and if I get stopped out, you know, then I may look to kind of re-add back into here, which is, you know, a few more dollars down, right, which is around 248. So again, having this plan really helps. Um, SMCI was another one too that um, I couldn't help. And I started a position um, 
today. This is a name that we've seen a ton of option activity in, right? A little bit of uh, selling volume in today. But again, to, you know, I like that um, we're, we're into the 20 day moving average. I, I bought it a little bit too early um, today. Um, and uh, it would have been a better buy at the end of the day. But again, you know, really nice. Um, consolidation, right? Let's talk about the Chinese internets for again, for, for a minute. Again, I'm all about kind of talking about a little bit of trading strategy right now, right? Now look at this thing, um, Alibaba. So first thing that a lot of traders notice, right? When they miss, when they feel like they missed a trade, right? Because the stock ended up 14% today. And many traders are thinking, oh my God, it's up 14%. I missed it. I can't chase a name up 14%. Um, and this, and what I try to do is say, hey, this tell traders, and again, I, I don't know, I don't have a crystal ball, but it could be the beginning of a move, right? This company is splitting into six different companies, right? That seems like pretty good opportunity, right? That they're going to basically, you know, even though it's still the same company, they're splitting it up, but people may ex want to extract value um, out of that situation. And also, they're also pleasing the government, which is what they wanted to, to have um, done. And that might be a good sign, right? For companies in China to work hand in hand with um, the government and please them, right? Um, sometimes the, the government ends up rewarding companies that do that. So could be a little bit of a change in tone. What I would be watching here is the bottom of value, right? This is a nice move into, um, into the March value area. So a trade could be, hey, put your stop right outside the, the bottom of value. Right. And um, and again, you're not risking that much in that situation. Now, of course, China names have overnight risk uh, because they do trade locally. But um, that's something that I, I would really pay attention to. And again, if you think that you missed it right up 14 percent, you know, where is this stock been? I mean, if you go back to you know the beginning of uh, February, the stock is still down <laughs> decently. The stock was at 120 bucks, so it's still down 20 percent, right? So don't get caught up in like, oh my God, it's up 14 percent. I missed it. You know, look at the volume today, right? It's very strong, and this could be the 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 start of a move. And if you want a little bit more tolerance, use the 200 day moving average, right? And get this thing out of your head about you know, oh my God, I don't, you know, I I don't. That scares me. I missed it. You know, um, it could be just the start of a move. You know, let's also look at the whole group um, because this is a group that kind of um, really fell by the wayside. But again, you know, same thing, the Chinese Internet ETF, it just kind of snuck back into the valuary. So, you know, 30 bucks is a level to trade against for or if you want a little bit more tolerance, you know, maybe use 2950 or, or even 29 right, as some tolerance. But, um, you know, maybe this thing can start to kind of move back right after um, this. And you can draw a trend line in here if that makes you happy. Happy little trend line, right? as Bob Ross used to say with his uh, trees that he was adding. Happy little draw. Happy Happy little trees in here. Let's draw a happy little trend line in here. <laughs> All right. So sorry to uh, joke around, but just trying to keep it uh, a little bit light here. Billy's another one that saw option activity today. By the way, K Web, Ababa, Billy, and um, uh, TAL also option activity today. So again, how would I phrase this? You know, if I were to enter a trade in Billy, which again, I don't have any position in it, but I would use 24 as your stop, right? Just a buck down. You know where your trade is going to work. You know where it's not going to work. And I would be targeting this 27 VPOC up here. TA also saw a boatload of option activity. How would I use this one? Where would I put my stop? Right below that 200-day moving average. Now, again, this does have to fight through this um, resistance here. But remember, this value area is just going to be active for a few more days. Right, At The end of March is uh, on Friday. Um, and then the, the resistance might be a little bit higher for this name. Right. I'm cheating and looking at the April value area, even though we don't have all the uh, information on it yet. All right, so so pretty interesting. A couple other names that I that I thought um, were was interesting was um, Ulta. Right, of course, this Elf has been uh, a rock star. Right, has you know, since this thing broke out of value, it is continued. Now, I'm not going to say the same exact thing is going to happen here with Ulta, but it does look like a similar setup here. Uh, and I, I really like this. Um, I did not put this trade on at the end of the day. I, the way that this market is, I'm 
um, content with waiting, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, not putting on a ton of exposure, right? Because I did add a little bit of uh, of uh, some trades into today's weakness, and um, watch for five twenty eight. I mean, I think this is a really good looking setup. Um, again, just because it's a good looking setup doesn't mean it's guaranteed to work. But um, I really like the touch of the um, the twenty day and the fifty day moving average. Um, notice how all three of these little moving averages, the 50, the 20, and the five all met up. And I, and I really like this, uh, this setup for tomorrow. Um, another one too that I've been watching that had good earnings is um, shifts for payments, which had a pretty good day. Um, up 2.8% in a tough tape, right? You could see I've got a happy little trend line drawn in there too. Um, let's see if this gets above um, that value area. Um, also, it will, it will have um, that trend line. Also, it will have to get above 69.75, right, for a clear break of uh, this week's range. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Um, I hope you enjoy these videos. Um, you know, I might be turning the paywall on for some of these videos. You'll know, probably continue to do a couple of these videos for free, but um, you know, eventually they're. They won't all be for free, but for now, if you if you do like these videos, you know, give it a like and um, follow the YouTube, and I'll have more updates for you, guys. Have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow.